Thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, you know, we are here to enjoy the work of the De Young Open, and, uh, which is a wonderful exhibition hosted by the De Young Museum in honor of local Bay Area artists. So we have more than 800 artists in this exhibition, and we have the opportunity today to spend time with one of the extra special artists here in this group, renowned artist Sonia Whittle, who is not only a painter, she is a singer, she does so many things. So we are privileged to have her here with us today. Welcome, Sonia. Oh, and I'm going to take a step back for a second and say, for those who don't know, I am Tracy Brown, Chair of Arts and Letters for the Contra Costa Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Hello. as well as a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated's Regional Arts and Letters team. Hello. So I am here, happy to be um, representing Contra Costa Alumni Chapter, as well as Arts and Letters in Delta. So, Sor Whittle, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate Soros coming out here today, Soros and family coming out here today to support me and all of the wonderful artists in the museum um, today. It is such an honor to have been selected as a part of this amazing exhibit. Um, you see the Bay Area is obviously rich in talent. Um, my work is number 314 here. Um, it is a um, portrait of my, my son and his dad. Um, Oh, okay, sorry, it's a portrait of my son and his dad. It was taken um, in, uh, this portrait was, um, the, the photo of it was taken by myself in 2020, 2020, almost 2021. And um, it is a representation of, it's symbolic of a lot of things. I was gonna, I'll break it down just a little bit in the sense that um, his dad had, is, is no, was no longer in the house and he was coming to visit. Um, over and I had just been throwing out this couch. So this couch is here in front of my yard waiting for the bulk pickup. And um, you can see from the, the positioning in what struck me about this, let's say that. What struck me about the, the, the moment and the time was this kind of meeting that was happening between the two outside. Um, I think there's a delicate um, connection of the mask between the two of them that is symbolic for me of of, um, of uh, imparting some information, some wisdom there um, upon him. Amari is sitting on the edge of his seat. His dad is comfortably sunken into the into the couch, representing his own perspective of his life, you know, his journey in life, and how much he's achieved and how much wisdom he has to impart on his young son on the edge of his seat, waiting to receive dad's information. You'll see on the um, and behind them is a gate. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take from some of what Brother Malik Sinefru um, kind of gleaned from this work and shared with me his perspective then was that um, what he can see is like father imparting the information on a child about, the, about life and the journey ahead of him. Mm -hmm. On one side you see the car, which is a vehicle he can take, and the other is a pathway, a gateway, a doorway into something, and you'll see represented on the door is a Haitian symbol of um, representing Legba, who is the, at the, the, he sits at the crossroads and communicates um, with the spirits and opens doors, um, crossway, represent north, south, east, west, all the directions you can go. So therefore, the symbolic, the overall symbolic nature of this piece has to do with guiding, um, the father guiding his son, through these pathways, the gate behind them could appear as a block, as a blockage. Um, but there's an open pathway that is, you know, being laid out for him. If he goes in those directions, he can have a fruitful life behind him in lush green trees and things of that sort. So that is, um, that is, I think, brother Sinefu really brought it home for me. I knew what I was communicating, um, but he just really saw some amazing things and helped me to realize even in my own work. So I hope that you can spend a little time and think about what it might represent for you and what things come out of it for you. But um, that's that. But I just want to say again, how grateful I am. This journey has been really short in a sense, right? For me, um, 
being here, being accepted into a museum at this early stage in my life, really. I mean, I'm 50, but <laughs> it's still an early stage in my art, my painting life, because I've done all the other things, poetry, singing, and all this stuff, and put my time there, but my degree is in art, and I never really put it forward to the world um, in all this time. And uh, pandemic sat me down, gave me time to paint, mm -hmm. and really put all the energy into it, and I've had a couple of shows up before this, mm -hmm. give thanks for those, and soul work, and it's been received really well um, in a short period of time, but at 49, I gathered a group of women in my backyard for my birthday, and um, we lit an intention candle, we set it, we, I spoke the words about where I wanted to go in my artist career, um, and everybody kind of joined in on us, and we did the work, and then I, you know, went to go visit Art Basel. I was like, I'm going to be in all the spaces of art is, where, you know, art is, and yeah. figure this thing out. And then, and then, um, and then Christmas again, around New Year. Sorry, we did a. Uh, I was invited to a vision boarding party, which I kind of hate. You know, I've led vision boarding parties, <laughs> and I never finished my own vision board. You know, <laughs> for, with the girls with our um, Delta Academy, and. Um, this time something was different. I, had, I knew what I wanted to put on it, and one of them um, at the time I was thinking about applying for the MOAS Emerging Artist um, grant. I, I, I stopped myself because I felt like it was too soon, but I was setting intentions then and through that vision board. And it's very obvious that I was, you know, intention to be in a museum. So I see, I hear you saying you manifested. I mean, what you didn't necessarily think would be so by having this vision, setting the intention, and moving forward with right. your with your application. Is this um, this piece you were saying that is early in your painting life? Is are the themes that exist in this piece consistent with what show up in your work in other areas? Um, yes, in a in a sense. Um, I think I have I have a in, in poetry and spoken word. Um, I have a more um, skeptic, skeptical skeptical. Um, <laughs> perspective um, of like of, of verbally creating a visual representation of mm -hmm. what I see in the world uh -huh. and so sometimes that can be you know that can be a, a harsh realization mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a more peaceful vision but most of my work today I think is more centered around um, my matrilineal, matrilineal, matrilineal line mm -hmm. I've been um, doing work of my paintings of my mother, my grandmother, um, they sit on my altar and I feel like they are like having conversation with me to bring their, um, bring their lives present today and tell their stories, right? So, and it, it's given me an opportunity to have a, really, uh, a new relationship with, with them to, to understand who they are and their life, and, you know, um, the, their experiences and, and let the world know that they're important too, you know, and so, I don't know where I'm going, you know, all the places I just, I'm open. Someone asked me like, oh, why would you submit? Because I told them I submitted something totally different to the black woman's God. Mm -hmm. um, I had something really in mind for that. And the theme is motherhood. The theme is motherhood. But however, <clears throat> I, that piece was not, that Ma piece was not accepted. Um, <laughs> that piece was not accepted. But in this moment when I was talking about it, I, I am in, I, it was, I had a piece accepted but not the piece that I created specifically for it. Uh -huh. So um, the piece that I created for it was is, is my self-portrait, I think you've seen it, um, mm -hmm. called On Mamas. Okay. But it's still, you know, it's, it's a representation of myself through my, through, um, I would say the matrilineal line, matrilineal line as well, uh, representing like, my fur coat, I'm embodying my grandmother, right. this the stern look on my face, it has to do with my mother and my aunt, so things of that, you know. Anyway, that was accepted, but someone asked me, why would you submit something that's totally different, a different style of art or of work? I was like, because I'm, I'm so, to me, I'm so new here. I want to explore all the, exactly. you show your range. The, yes, all of my whole range. Mm -hmm. I recently did a sculpture oh. um, mm -hmm. out of clay that I'm going to have bronze. And so I, I don't know where I'm going, so, but I just want to. Well, I appreciate that. You're psychic because I was about to ask you what is next for you. So you'll be in Black Woman is God, or you are in Black Woman is God, which starts. It opens on Thursday, October 19th at the Marlowe Gallery on Grant. Phenomenal here in San show. Francisco on Grant Street. Phenomenal. Yeah, show. yeah phenomenal show. It's, the theme is motherhood, Black Woman is God. Mm -hmm. I hope that you all can come out. Thank you, Tracy. And thank so you. For being here. Thank you so much for telling us about your work and sharing and letting us know where we can see you next. So we look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you. Thank you. So before um, before everybody adjourns.
we're asking if you take a, a spend a little time